I'm going to call your attention, first of all, once again, to the book of Jude, the book of Jude. And I hope you can pick up something from this lesson on tonight. It's dealing with holiness. You don't hear too many talking about holiness, but it is a doctrine that is so necessary to be taught. Whenever God calls an individual, he calls them out of something to bring them into something else. He called the children of Israel, and Abraham, excuse me, out of Ur of Chaldees to take him to a land that he would show him. And whenever God calls us out, he calls us to, to take us out from the dominion of sin that we may live in his presence and enjoy the benefits of fellowship with our creator. All of our goals, our main goal should be that we're looking forward to inheriting the kingdom that God has provided for those who obey him. There is a kingdom. Most of you that are here on tonight have entered that kingdom by the new birth. When you received the new birth, you received entrance into the kingdom of the Most High God. And it was done by water and by spirit. And you take on, at least you should take on, a whole new demeanor as well that we should be poised to live a life that would be pleasing and unto God as well as being instruments uh, that God can use us to help draw other people to his eternal glory. And therefore, amen, not only are we called and given us a new birth, but it's a call to obedience. We are to obey God. And in the future, he allows us to know that we shall inherit Amen. A kingdom that has no end to it. Actually, we're in that kingdom, but we're waiting to see the fruition of it. In the book of Jude, this small little book written by the half-brother of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he had started off getting ready to talk about the common salvation. But then he let us to know it was more important and needful that he exhorted the people to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. When you look at verse number four, he says something takes place. For there are certain men that crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. He says these men are ungodly men. He said, they turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness. In other words, to break it down, a license to sin. In other words, grace will cover everything. Well, let me make it clear to you. God doesn't give anybody a license to transgress. Amen. Denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. He lets you to know if you keep on reading, they can look for doom. Sin, the results of it, amen, has always been the same. It causes death. And God, by his grace, brought us into the place where we have been forgiven. And he looks for us to be wise in our lifestyle. While oh, it's coming to me, let me share this with you. Sin is not only an assault against the sovereignty of God. In fact, all sin, there's a Greek word called harmatia. It means missing the mark. It's like someone having a bullseye and you shooting at it, but you keep missing it. Therefore, the man or woman who transgresses, amen, misses the intended mark that God has set out for them. And so all sin initially is against the sovereignty of God. But let me take you another step. Sin 
will also cause a lot of havoc in your life before you get where you think you want to go. It's, it's devastating. It will do things that will cause you to be so unhappy in this present life that life will become almost unbearable to you when you transgress. David, sometimes they don't tell you the whole story. He was forgiven, but the sword never departed from his house. He had to do some suffering, and he said, my sin is always before me. Much of what I do when I come here, I'm excited when people get saved. I'm more excited when they walk in the spirit because I know that no man lives unto himself. Everybody affects somebody. Amen. When, when something takes place in your life, know that you can't say, I, I just, this is just me. I'm just doing it to myself. No, no. Somebody's being affected by whatever you do, whether it be a spouse, whether it be a child, co-worker, friend, neighbor. Somebody is affected by transgression. Amen. And I just think it's good to read all this ammunition, which can prevent us where we don't have to go through certain things because we're just obedient. Amen. It's not saying that God cannot save or forgive, but there's some things I don't want to have to be forgiven for. I, I would rather just be obedient and not have to turn around and suffer. Amen. All the pains that come with being disobedient. Amen. And so the word of God comes to us in the form of, I say, grace. Give me Titus chapter 2. God says something about grace here. It says the grace of God. The unmerited favor of God. If you really want to know, human beings, their major problem is sin. <laughs> That's their major problem. That's the problem. Missing what God has prescribed in his word. I've said ever since I was a young man, that I thank God for all of his commandments because if obeyed, <laughs> you're going to leave yourself, alleviate yourself of a whole lot of pain. I believe those things are given to us because these laws that are given are already in motion. When anyone disregards them and goes against them, amen, it's going to bring about a guilt on the person. It's, it's going to rob you of your joy and rob a whole lot of folk around you and realize you're only on this planet for a little while. So you have to be wise in judgment. The things you do and the decisions you make will carry you for the rest of your life. My job is not just to preach the gospel whereby you get saved, but also that you maintain your salvation after you save that you may grow in the wisdom and the knowledge of God. Not only will you bring glory to him, but at the same time, you can win somebody else. Know when an individual considers himself to be a child of God, and they turn around and transgress in front of the sinner, you just blocked up heaven for them. Because they're looking at your life. And rather being a witness for the master, the Bible says you open up his wounds afresh. And when you fall in love with God, you don't want to do anything to grieve the Holy Ghost. That's when you fall in love. I want you to examine yourself because it's good to do this every day of your life because you're going to be uh, <laughs> taunted sometime by your flesh, sometime by the devil, but you have to make a astute decision. If I make this decision, what am I going to have to pay for it? And am I willing to pay for this transgression? And for the most part, folk don't want to pay for it. Amen. And when they have to pay for it, they don't like what they, what they got to pay. There's a couple of commercials out that I, I think that are such a wake-up call. You see smoking commercials, and they show you these guys on iron lungs and full of cancer and got two people out their new nose, and they're telling you not to smoke like they did. Am I right? You've seen some of those commercials. You could have just prevented all that anguish if you had to just obey just natural laws. Amen. But people seem like they want to disobey. Verse 11, for the grace of God 
that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. And then he says, it's appeared. What we know about God is well documented. Whether you are a sinner or a saint, case in point, don't you know that the moral laws that are on the books in our penal code, they come from the Bible. When they make judgments, whether it be on the Supreme Court or appellate court or whatever it may be, certain judgments they make, those moral laws came from the scriptures. That's where they got them from. And they got into print, and so when people transgress, amen, they have certain penalties they have to pay. I think all of you have seen egg on the face of various politicians in DC where this madam has come up and said that she had prostitutes that ministered to them. Now they're having to lose relationships, egg on their face, losing their jobs, amen, all because of their stupidity, amen. And maybe they felt they were above the law but whatever you do in the dark is going to come out in the light. God is going to open it up like a can of sardines. Amen. And so it's better to obey him. Nobody gets away with anything. Somewhere down the line, you're going to pay for it. I love holiness because it has helped me to have a very nice, peaceful life because he took us out of sin. I ain't never thought about backsliding since I've been saved. It don't even come to my mind to go back. Amen. I mean that thing. I ain't never thought about leaving God. I thought about leaving some of the folk, but I ain't never thought about leaving God. Amen. And it teaches us something. Denying ungodliness. Keep in mind that as long as you're on this planet, God will never violate your freedom of choice. You are a free will moral agent. But he says choose life or death. Depending on what you choose can be devastating or it can be advantageous. Some choices people make are terrible choices. So you really want to make the choices that God has set forth in his word. Denying ungodliness. Who's going to do it? You have to do it. You can't wait for anybody to do it for you. Amen. And remember, you're not home until you're home. There's people that have been over here 10, 15, 20, 25, and 30 years and mess up at the gate because they got lackadaisical and they stopped implementing what they had been hearing. And when you ever, whenever you stop obeying what the scriptures have to say, look for trouble. Amen. So denying ungodliness, worldly lust. We should live soberly. Be sober in your thinking. He ain't just talking about alcohol now. He's talking about sober thinking. Some folk are just silly. Amen. Soberly, righteously. You know what righteousness means? Do the right thing. That's what righteousness is. Just do the right thing. Amen. Then he goes on to say, godly. And he says, not when you get to heaven. In this present world. Then he says, you are anticipating an event that most people are not anticipating, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing or the reappearing of our great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me put a test on you here. Whenever you have to make a decision between right and wrong, sin and shame and righteousness, whatever decision you have to make, if you choose unrighteousness and sin, you don't believe he's coming back right then. You can test yourself. Because if a man or woman really believes it, they'll purify themselves. That's a good way to test yourself. Amen. If Do I really believe what I hear every week or I just come to church because it's coming time? What you learn and hear me preach and teach and live, you're supposed to take that home, on the job, in the school. These words ought to be your life. 
when you come out of this little building after one hour. Amen. And nobody is playing Perry Mason following nobody all day long. Everybody is left up, amen, on the honor system. It's up to you to do the right thing. If it's done, not only will God be glorified, but you will prosper. You will prosper. Righteousness exalteth the nation. Sin is a reproach to any people. Amen. These words are true. Glory be to God. Amen. Then he goes on to say, he gave himself. He says, here's the price that I've paid for you to have this freedom. He gave himself that he might redeem us from all iniquity, every wickedness, and purify unto himself a peculiar people, zealous of good works. The church is not a curious people. They're a peculiar people. Amen. And that's not bad. They act different than the norm. They are bent on doing the will of God and obeying the will of God that not only will they give God glory, but they'll win somebody else to the kingdom of God. And Jesus Christ is the only antidote to Satan, sin, and this whole world. Amen. The only one we have. All right. Go on over to the book of Romans chapter number one. Tonight I'm going to read that from the NIV version. Just for clarity. I want to read something concerning that. But I guess I, I'll pick up maybe one or two verses and, and run on with that. Let me pick up starting at verse number uh, 21. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations. Their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Then it said they changed the glory of God, glory of the uncorruptible God, into an image made like unto corruptible man, birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. Then he says, wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Verse number 25 who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever, amen, my Lord. In the NIV it says this, in the same way, verse 27, the men also abandoned the natural relation with women inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received themselves the due penalty for their perversion. Do you know in some countries you cannot read that verse? Uh-huh, it's against the law to read Romans here. Thank God we're still able to read it right now in America. But they call you homophobic. Amen. But there's 23 other sins mentioned here. And they all have the same penalty, death. And so he goes on to say, he also mentions the women and the men. So when you hear about the low down or the down low, whatever they call it, amen, it ain't new to God. He saw all that a long time ago, amen. Then he says, furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain the knowledge of God, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. Might I say this, I don't ever want God to take his hand off me. I mean, for God to say, oh, I'm through with you. Just do what you got to do. I never want to be in that place. I don't want to get to the place where I would be past feelings, that I can't feel the guilt if I did something that was incorrect. Amen, my Lord. They have become filled with every kind of wickedness. Then he starts mentioning evil, greed, depravity. They are full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, malice, gossips, slanderers, God-haters, insolent, arrogant, boastful. They invent ways of doing evil. They disobey their parents. 
They are senseless, faithless, heartless, ruthless. Although they know God's righteous decree that those who do such things deserve death, they not only continue to do these very things, but also approve of those who practice them. Boy, is that a frightening scripture? You ought to memorize this stuff. This is what's going on daily. Amen. And every last one of these sins, if it's practice, it affects somebody else. If you're greedy, you'll do anything and cheat anybody. You'll trespass them. Amen. Oh, yeah. To get what you think you need to get. Envy and jealousy will cause hatred. It will cause division in relationships. Amen. This book called the Bible is the greatest book in the world. It'll help you get through this quagmire called life if you obey it. Then he goes on to say, in verse number one, chapter number two, you therefore have no excuse. You who pass judgment on someone else, for at whatever point you judge the other, you are condemning yourself because you pass judgment to the same things. Let me tell you what he's actually saying. Do you think you can do those things? Point a finger at somebody else and not get the same punishment. In other words, God doesn't show favoritism. In other words, the individual points that you shouldn't have did that. You see what you did? And you're doing the same thing and you're not going to suffer the consequences. Amen. Grace does not give the child of God a license to sin. So he goes on to say here in verse number two. Watch what he says here. Amen. Now we know that God's judgment against those who do such things is based on truth. So when you, a mere man, pass judgment on them and yet do the same things, do you think you will escape God's judgment? Or do you show contempt for the riches of his kindness, tolerance, and patience, not realizing that God's kindness leads you toward repentance. God was kind enough to lead us to the place where we denounce those things that were contrary to his sovereignty. That was the kindness of God. And thank God he granted you and I. I'm thanking God for myself. He granted me repentance. Amen. Watch what he goes on to say here. Hallelujah. But because of your stubbornness, an unrepented heart, you're storing up wrath against yourselves for the day of God's wrath, when his righteous judgment will be revealed. God will give to each person according to what he has done, to those who by persistent in doing good seek glory, honor, and immortality. He will give eternal life. But for those who are self-seeking, who reject the truth, follow evil. There will be wrath and anger. There will be trouble, distress for every human being who does evil. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. But glory, honor, peace for everyone who does good. First for the Jew, then for the Gentile. God does not show favoritism. If you make the right choice and do the right thing, the blessings of God upon all of us. See, why do I teach this? I don't know what you're being confronted with when you're out of my sight. I know that sin is large. And I know that there's a war going on to try to make you discredit what's in this book. It's going to be a battle between the spirit and the flesh until Jesus comes back. But thank God we have the knowledge of God. And we take no pleasure in doing anything that would cause the Holy Ghost to be grieved. Amen. Well, let's move on over to the book of 1 Corinthians 6. I'm going to show you chapter and verse from book to book. What I'm reading to you is not written to the world. These letters are written to people that have experienced being born again. These letters are to tongue talkers. This is for folk that are baptized in water and spirit and to walk with God. We don't even judge those outside of the church. God will judge them. We judge those in the church that we might be found doing the right thing. 
Amen. You cannot get away from the adulterers and the fornicators. But not let, let not a brother or a sister be a fornicator or an adulterer or a covetous or full of envy and hatred, strife and murder. It says have nothing to do with them. Amen. That they might come to repentance. Amen. Peradventure God had granted to them. Sin, just the thought of it, ought to make a child's heart, child of God, have an earthquake in their chest. Amen. Just the thought of it. Amen. Say, oh, no, Lord. Be like Joseph. How can I do this thing? All that you've been and done for me, and I'm going to turn around and transgress against you, the very vessel where the Holy Ghost is living? You showed me that much grace? Amen. That's if you believe you've been filled with the Holy Spirit. If you really feel you've been redeemed, if you know it, you don't belong to yourself anymore. You were bought with a price. It was expensive for God to give us the Holy Ghost. It cost him his most fairest jewel for you and I to be recipients of the Holy Spirit. Do you think God is just going to disregard that when he showed us so much grace? Oh, hallelujah. Come on here. Uh, NIV version, 1 Corinthians 6. Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? My Lord, I don't even want to be called wicked. He says the wicked. He says, do not be deceived. You know, what, you know what deception is? Is when you think you're right when you're wrong. Am I right, sis? That's what, that's what it is. You think you're all right when you stone cold wrong. Don't let nobody with flowery speech, amen, tell you that sin will give you an advantage. You always lose. Amen. Every pulpiteer, men that had great works, when sin got in, their ministries went down the smokestack. And one thing about it, human beings got minds like elephants. They never forget. That's why it's good to take advantage of this word and hide it in your heart that you sin not against him. Glory be to God. Come on here. Ah, uh, do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, huh? Is that what it says? Nor the idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor the drunkards, nor the slanders, nor the swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. Is that what he says? Amen. He said, you will not inherit the kingdom of God. If you went back and picked up each one of these sins, whenever they're committed, they hurt somebody else. Not only does it do devastation to you, but somebody else is also going to be hurt, amen, because of the offender. Am I right? Oh, yeah. Amen. No man is an island. No woman is an island to herself. Amen. It affects everybody around them that are close to them when sin goes unchecked. Hallelujah. Well, well, well. All right. Galatians chapter number five. Oh, thank you, Lord. Mm, mm, mm. I'm only reading the NIV. Your King James means the same. Just for clarity, is the reason why I'm using this tonight. I have it in both versions right here before me, but I'd rather read it from there. Life by the Spirit, starting in verse number 16. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. Is that what it says? If you live by the Spirit, and I'm not talking about going to work speaking in tongues all day. Speaking English on your job, all right? I said, thank you, some kind of kook. Amen. Amen. Salvation ain't stupid. We got a good sense. What I'm saying to you, if you allow the Word of God, which is Spirit, it will lead and guide you and protect you. Amen. Now, I'm going to say something that's going to sound harsh and rough, but it's real, and it can be attained. I also believe if a man repents, confesses, I mean really confesses, and turns from his sin, confesses it, God is just to forgive him of his sin, and the blood of Jesus cleanses him, 
if he sins. I'm telling you, you don't have to. You do not have to fall into transgression. God always makes a way of escape. Amen. Once you get that in your spirit, well, I was weak for a moment. Don't claim weakness. Walk in the spirit. God is able to keep you every day of your life. Amen. It's not that somebody over here, because they're stronger, because they look stronger. It's about what's in you. If you really allow the word of God to dwell in you, you will not gratify the deeds of the flesh. As I told the afternoon class, you need more than Monday night prayer. You need Monday night prayer too. But you need more than that. Half an hour a week ain't going to keep you. You have to live in a spirit of prayer. The child of God that is victorious, amen, even in his or hers meditation, a prayer is going up. Amen. You can talk to God without even opening your mouth. Meditation on God. He says the man that meditates day and night, he will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. You can drive down the 405 or the 110 and be talking to God. Then sometimes you're on your knees, sometimes you're laying on your back, sometimes you're standing, sometimes you're crouching, sometimes you're working, sometimes you're walking through the backyard. But keep a prayer on your heart. Amen. Hallelujah. Keep on just talking to God. Amen. Singing to him. Giving him glory. You will not gratify the deeds of the flesh. For when sin tries to rise up, the spirit of the Lord will take up a standing. And you'll say, oh no, not here. Amen. I am not going to lose my life. Oh, no, I'm not. Uh -uh. God has given us more wisdom than that. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you just saying that because you're a pastor. You got the same Holy Ghost I got. You got as much power in your life as I have in mine. God don't give somebody a cup of Holy Ghost, then somebody else gets a half a gallon, and somebody else gets two gallons. When he gives it to you, he gives everybody the same amount. He fills you up. And you got power in your life every day if you walk in the spirit not to gratify the deeds of the flesh. Then you ought to think before you do something. Am I willing to pay the price for this transgression? Because I'm sure going to have to pay for it. And can't nobody preach like your conscience. Your conscience will not shut up. It won't even say amen. It'll whip you night and day. Yeah, it will. I don't care who tries to excuse you. You cannot get away from your conscience. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you old, that's why. No, I got saved when I was young. Amen. I was 24 when I got saved. And I had access to all kinds of women. I know God is able to keep you. I had the finances, I had the job, I dressed good, I smelt good, amen, and there was a whole lot of ladies I could have had. But because of my commitment to my God, I walked down through that studio every day and haven't transgressed yet because God is able to keep you when he saves you, and I didn't have any more power than the other one that got the Holy Ghost, but my life changed when I got saved. There were fine women, good-looking women, good shapes, all kinds, folks saying crazy stuff to you, pressing you up against the wall. Not here. My mind was made up to walk with God in my 20s, my 30s, my 40s, my 50s, and I'm about to be 60, and hey, I'd be a fool to act up now. Amen. I done come this far. It don't make sense. God is able to keep you, but you got to have a commitment to God. On top of that, I didn't want somebody to turn around and say, I thought you said you was a Christian. Then I got to explain, amen, well, I am, but I just acted a fool. No, I am going to be an example, and if you want to see a saint, watch me every day. I will be an example that Jesus really does say. You don't understand. I, I'm fighting. Everybody fighting. That lame excuse. Amen. You got power.
the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature they are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law law is for the law the law is for lawless folk amen you're not afraid when the police come by you if you ain't done nothing you're running because you did something. The acts of the sinful nature, somebody said, obvious. He said, it ain't obscure. He said, they're obvious. Sexual immorality, first thing. Impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft. Let me hit that. Saints don't fool with Ouija boards. We don't go to soothsayers. We don't go to palm readers. You already know your future. You live saved, you go to heaven. You live wrong, you go to hell. What else is the palm reader going to tell you? Amen. You either live for God, you make it. You don't live for him, you go to hell. Just that simple. You don't need anybody to look at your, what the lines are. Amen. And you're going to be rich, and they always broke. If they ought to bless themselves first, how come they ain't got nothing? Hatred, boy, that's a, that's a tough one. Do you know hatred is a tough thing? Because usually you hate somebody because it's something they did to you, and now you're trying to get it out of you, and hatred can run deep. But if you want to get loose, you got to get rid of hatred. And that doesn't mean that you agree with everything, but you can't let hatred set up. Amen. Then it goes on to say, my, 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 my. Hatred discord, jealousies, fits of rage. That's the work of the flesh. Every child of God ought to have control. I just lost it. No, you ain't supposed to lose it. The saint of God is not supposed to have fits of rage. Huh? Knocking out windows and throwing stuff out the second floor. and all. No, no, no. Selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness. Look at here, orgies. That's threesomes, foursomes, fivesomes. God knows a whole bunch of stuff, don't he? Huh? Look at the orgies in there. And the like. I warned you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. You know what must have been happening when he writes to Corinth, Galatians, Ephesians? All that was being practiced all around them. That's why it was written. So you have to understand, you're not part of that. That part of society you're not part of. This is written to people like you and I, and guess what? Almost 2,000 years later, it's as fresh tonight as it was when it was written. Because ain't nothing changed in the human response to sin. It's still the same. The nature is still the same, but thank God for power. Amen. Now watch this. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 4. We love the last part of this, but we're going to pick up the first part of it. Okay. 1 Thessalonians 4, finally, brothers, we instructed you how to live in order to please God. You know what he's saying? We teach you how to live to please God. Paul is saying some heavy stuff. Because remember, the goal of the soul, at least it should be, that we do the Enoch, that we please God. He says, now we're telling you how to please God. In other words, it's quite clear. And I don't know how you feel about it. I want to please him. On top of that, I want a full reward. But you have to believe this thing. See, the problem that we're dealing with is so much unbelief. And unbelief can creep in on you and wear you out. There's an article right now on the internet. Can't think of the guy's name. I left it at home. It's a big article. He once was a minister with Catherine Kuhlman exceptional pianist as well as composer. Can't even tell you all the songs he composed. 
He was part of um, uh, the Assemblies of God. Went back to Azusa Pacific. I think he must have had a couple of master's degrees. I mean, just drenched in the word of God and what have you. Now he's an atheist. And if you would see some of the songs he's now reading, he's discrediting everything that he was a part of for maybe 30 or 40 years. He's reprobate. He looks like your next door neighbor, you know, husband, grandchildren, and everything, totally denies the existence of God. It makes you think, what got a hold to you? What did you get involved with? After going to all those schools of higher learning, and actually, I've been in the presence of Catherine Kuhlman, and she was an anointed lady. There were some things, God used that lady. And I'm going to tell you right now, he saw some things. But it seemed like, amen, it didn't register with him. Then I thought about the scripture. If he had have been of us, he never would have left us. He left us so he could be manifested that he wasn't with us. 1 John chapter number 2 is right there. When you see somebody leave this, totally disregarded, there's a good chance they really wasn't in this thing. That's why you have to examine yourself and see whether you're in the faith or out of the faith. You got to talk to yourself. Do I really believe this? Am I sure this is the word of God? Amen. I am convinced that this is it. Going on 36 years of walking like this, I'm sure this is the truth. I'm getting up and getting out of here with this. Amen. This is the truth. Regardless of all the various onslaughts against the word of God and what have you, the Holy Ghost lets me to know the power of the living God has sealed us into the day of redemption. It is certain that this is right. And everything about it written, if, if it's done, brings about a positive result. And everything it goes against will bring about a ne negative result. Watch what he says here. Uh, finally, brothers, we instruct you how to live in order to please God. As in fact, you are living. Now we ask you and urge you, I want you to pick this up, in the Lord Jesus to do this more and more. No saint is supposed to be diminishing. There ought to be a progressive walk. Amen. Maturity is taking place. Because remember, while you're on this planet, your assignment, every last one of you now, is ambassadorship. You will reach somebody that I'll never reach. Amen. But we should speak the same thing. That's why when you leave out of here, you load up, you know, your Holy Ghost pistol and go out and ain't shooting blanks, man. <laughs> Amen. We need to let everybody know who we can, who will listen to us. Amen. Everybody ain't going to listen to you, but if, if they give you an audience, give them in humbleness a reasonable answer of the hope that lies within you. Because this is the truth. This word will never return to God void. Whatever has gone out of his mouth, it will accomplish what it was sent out to do. He said it is settled in heaven. The one thing God cannot do, he cannot go against his own word. If a man is unfaithful, he said, I cannot be unfaithful. You may deny me, but I cannot deny myself. My word is etched in Holy Ghost granted. If I said it, that settled it. Whether you believe it or not, it's settled. Hallelujah. You know what I love about that? He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. It lets me know I'm trusting in a God that is trustworthy. So therefore, when I'm in my dilemma, I'm having a problem, I can count on him to come to my rescue. And he will help me in every situation if I pray first and not last. Did you hear that? I said pray first and not last. Pray before you get there. Amen. Ask God to help you every morning. Lord, keep my soul from day to day under the blood. Keep doubts and fears and sin away. Lord, keep me under the blood. Don't allow me to be consumed by the deceiver. Hallelujah.
I'm watching even those amongst me, amen, it's supposed to be in the same faith. I'm watching them. I will not go down the wrong road just because somebody says they're an ordain, ordained minister and go against the Word of God. The Word of God means more than an organization. It means more, oh yes it does, than a tradition. It means more than your so-called church. The Word of God is first. Everything comes after the Word of God. You're supposed to have loyalty to God's Word first. It comes before your wife. It comes before your children. It comes before your husband. The Word of God is first. It will always be first. It can never be last because His Word is settled. I ain't mad at y'all. I'm just, that's the way I preach. You know? Hallelujah. So if anybody even suggests you to do something that's contrary to the Word of God, say, ah, oh, Lucy, here. not going that route. I got a God I got to serve. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Amen. Amen. Whatever it is, it don't last long enough, but it'll take your life from you. It'll suck all your strength out of you. Glory be to God. My, 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 my. Watch this. It is God's will. It is God's will. Well, let me go back to verse 2. For you know what instructions we gave you by the authority of the Lord Jesus. Yeah, that's something. Paul says, you know what instructions we gave you. You know what he's saying? We already told you this. We've already given you this. We've told you before, and the Lord is the one that gave it to us. So if you get upset, you got to get upset with God because God is the one that told us the Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ, gave this admonition that we might please him. If we say we love him, we'll keep his commandments. And you'll be happy, and so will God. My Lord, my Lord. Watch out here. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality. Is that what it says? He said, avoid it. Then get up and get out the way. Don't stay somewhere that's going to get you in trouble. Get out of it. Leave it. You got to play with that thing before you fall into it. You got to entertain it. That means you got to, you got to go totally against the will of God. Because you know in your mind it's wrong. And willful, presumptuous sin is a terrible sin. Lord, keep me from presumptuous sins. Amen. Hallelujah. The goal of a child of God to say, I disregard this. I'll pick it up later. You may not even get back. Amen. And I warn you, young people, you may not pay no attention to your pastor, but you'll pay a price for your immorality. Amen. Oh, yeah. It'll, it'll mess up your health. I can cite them. I'm not going to call names. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt because I've been here a long time. I've seen people go against God and their bodies just be initiated. Amen. I mean messed up, full of disease. All they had to do was obey God. I'm talking about preachers. Amen. They turned around and went against the will of God, thought they could get away from it. But God said, you keep on defiling the temple. He said, I'll destroy it for you. Keep on transgressing against me. Amen. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the living God? Do you know, amen, does the, does the child of God understand that the anointing that was in the tabernacle is now in you? Do you understand the anointing that was in the holy place is the anointing that is in you? Do you understand the Shekinah glory, amen, that was there in the wilderness as they built the temple that that anointing is in you. Do you know that when, when, when the Ark of the Covenant got back home, that anointing that rested in there is now in you? Hallelujah. I have given you my present. We have this treasure in our earthen vessel. That's why we highly respect our body as well as our spirit. My body is full of the Holy Ghost. God paid a price for me to have this spirit. Hallelujah. I will not allow anybody to sucker punch me or to talk me into doing something that would go against the God that paid such a price for my salvation. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Because if you commit it, you'll lose your peace and your peace is expensive. Hallelujah. Guilt will come in. 
And David said, my sin is ever before me. My bones are cold and broken. Hallelujah. Sin is devastating. It'll cause you to hide. You'll lose your shout. You'll lose your, oh yeah, you will. You will lose your influence. Your children will disrespect you. Your friends will disrespect you. When you do that which is wrong, you ought to be the one that has the highest respect everywhere you go because they know that you ain't shamming. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I oh, know this is tough stuff here. Amen. This ain't, this ain't the thousand dollar line. This is how you live saved once you get saved. Amen. To show God the praises that are due him. And what if most men won't do it? Does that make the word of God a none effect? Hallelujah. He saved you. You have an obligation. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sexual immorality that each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy, honorable, not in passionate lust, like the heathen who do not know God. We ain't supposed to act like the heathens. You got control. Temptation is not sin. It's yielding to it. You can't go around with blinders all day. Amen. But you can have control of yourself. Yeah, you can. God would never ask you to do something that you're not able to do. That would be unfair for God to give you a mandate that you're not able to fulfill. He always gives you the strength to do it. It's whether or not you want to do it. Glory be to God. Oh, boy. I have to worry about nobody shouting tonight. That each of you should learn to control his own body in a way that is holy, honorable, not a passion us, like the who do not know God, and that in this matter no one should wrong his brother or take advantage of him. The Lord will punish men for all such sins, for we have already told you and warned you, for God did not call us to be impure, but to live a holy life. Therefore, he who rejects this instruction does not reject man but God who gives us his Holy Spirit. Is that what it says? It's rejecting God who gives us his Holy Spirit. Now this where grieving comes in. Get me Ephesians 4. Hallelujah. Ephesians 4. Hallelujah. Let me pick up verse number 30. I'll read that from the King James. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. She said, don't make the Holy Ghost cry. Hmm? Let me tell you what's really foolish. To keep coming and not doing. Don't make sense. You're over here now. Let's go for broke. So to speak. Let's give it all we got. Let's please him. You'll be happy. You'll be at peace. Lay down and sleep. Won't be tossing and turning. Then get mad at everybody around you because you didn't act in a fool. Let all bitterness. Bitterness. I've been talking about this for the last, well, for a long time. Just ain't, I ain't started, I've been preaching like this all my preaching career. Bitterness. Man, that root of bitterness will spring up and defile many. That's why I said, don't even let the sun go down on your wrath. People don't want to, they don't believe that. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. The spirit of disrespect to what I'm doing here is running rampant. They think I don't know. I know when someone don't respect me. You think I'm stupid? I got a spirit of discernment. I, I know what's going on. They I, just because I bite my tongue and don't say nothing. I know when they don't respect it. I said someone to tell me, I I'll consider that. Look, all of you, they tell me you will consider, and I'm telling you, you in sin. When he says obey them, they have the rule over you because they watch for your soul. They must give an account one day, and you won't tell me you're going to consider it. But you're a backslidden self. You want to be under a ministry that keeps your feet to the fire so you don't go to the fire. And watch out for all these slick preachers. 
they got a smooth message, they'll deceive you. And the reason why they never preach the holy life is because they don't want to live holy. So they say, grace will just cover whatever you do. How shall we escape if we neglect so great of a salvation? And the one thing I found in all these years, when men and women play with Satan, he always wins. He is a bad customer. And he'll lure you in, and when he gets finished, he'll kill you. And he won't even laugh. He'll just look at you, fool. When I warn you about certain things, I know most of the ministers don't believe what I believe. I know that. I know that. And some are bishops. I say, do what you got to do. I done seen bishops die drunk. They were drunks when they died. And got babies all around and everything. Not here. That's the truth. Uh-huh. Babies flaked out and drunk, smoking weed, and still preaching. They got to answer to God. All I can answer is for myself. I ain't into none of that stuff. And I ain't doing it for you. I'm doing it for me. <laughs> Y'all are secondary. <laughs> I'm saving myself first, like the Bible says, and those that hear me. But no, I'm examining H.A. Swansea first. And I really don't give a kitty who don't like me because of this. If you got a problem with folk not liking you, when you do the right thing, you'll never make this journey. You got to learn how to stand up and be counted for in love, but don't take down. Don't take down from your steadfast position. Have no agreement with Belial. Leave that devil alone. Hmm? Because they always tell, am I right? They tell it in D.C.? They tell it. They open up the book. Huh? Oh, they tell it. This guy Spectre, they call him every woman he done threatened. Huh? They tell him. Yes, he slapped me. He pulled the gun on me. Uh, they always tell. Sin will always find you out. And that one that you gave yourself to, you will never see him again. That's why I tell these young girls, keep your underwear on. These little four guys that make you pregnant, they don't have, they don't, can't, they can't even buy a diaper. They ain't got no money, no education. They stupid. He cute. Cute ain't about nothing when you got to take care of some babies. And they go on about their way and make another baby and ain't studying you. You ought to see yourself more than a piece of meat. You ought to see yourself as a child of the living God because you're going to bite the bullet. You talking about me? I'm talking about anybody that the shoe fits. Yes, I'm telling you again because I'm your pastor. Leave the devil alone. He'll wear you out. You're no match for him. And they creep in here, and they're not saved. It is because they say, but, 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 but that don't mean nothing. Watch and see how they're going to live. Ba, 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 ain't speaking in tongues. <laughs> then you got the next 18 or 19 years, and it's hard to make a living nowadays. It's hard to raise children. It costs a whole lot. Then you get depressed and wonder why things have happened to you and go right back and trace it to your transgression. Huh? Amen. Let me warn you of this too. Adultery. If your spouse forgives you, thank God, but know you're going to take it to the grave. Because every now and then, they're going to wash your face with it. And don't even get mad, because dummy, you did it. <laughs> Ain't no sense now. I'm hot tonight. This is foolishness to turn around and, and act a fool to get mad. I thought she forget. I did. I just wanted to remind you so you don't do it again. Don't act up again. Because I really ought to put you out right now. Amen. 
But when you do that, you mess up your children, you mess up your wife, you lose your integrity in the church, then you're walking around all sad and everything. You're supposed to be sad. Amen. Until you really repent of it and ask God to really forgive you, and then you're going to have to suffer the consequences for your foolishness. And it's ridiculous to belong to this church as hard as I'm preaching, and you still acting a fool. All the word you done heard down through the years, you ought to be the strongest saints in Los Angeles. I mean every word of it. Very few preachers are preaching it the way I'm preaching it to you, and you still leave out of here acting up because you don't believe the Word of God. And it hurts God, it hurts me, it hurts your family, it hurts your church. Grieve not the Holy Ghost. Well, me and my wife ain't getting along. That ain't no excuse to commit adultery. Every marriage is working on something. There ain't no perfect man or perfect woman down here. And if you created it, they would still have some flaws because you ain't perfect with your weird self. You work it out on a daily basis and you learn how to make concessions. And you don't jump and run at the first little skirmish or make up an excuse to appease your flesh. You're the one that said to death do your part. Didn't nobody put a gun to your head? You said you would let your body be her, hers for the rest of your life. Are you going to break that vow? You got the answer to God. Let all bitterness wrath, anger. You ought to hate sin. You ought to be angry about it. Say, you ain't going to take my life away from me. Whew. Clamor, evil speaking. Be put away from you with all malice and be ye kind one to another. Let me drop this on you. Take another side. Never say you don't need somebody. I don't need no preacher. I don't need no pastor. I don't need you, brother. I don't need your sister. You'll eat those words down the line. The very one you say you don't think you need may be the very one that has to come to your aid after a while. Because God will prove it to you. Because you never know in the end who's going to come to help you. Hmm? Hmm? And, and, and a lot of times, it's somebody you ain't expect. Cast your bread upon the waters. Many days it's your return. It ain't coming back from the one you gave it to. Sister Brown, I'll tell you, I just helped somebody. This individual I ain't talked to and I don't know when. His word was, the people I thought was going to help me, they didn't show up. The individual's at the point of death. I called him. I said, what you need? It ain't like we like this. He's a brother of mine. He's a fellow minister. I said, it'll be, it'll be there tomorrow. The money will be there tomorrow. But all the other ones that he thought was going to be there, they're not there. You never know who's going to have to come to your rescue. It may be somebody totally foreign to you. Thank God. And the one you may not like may be the one that has to bring you a cup of water. Because let me tell you something. Ain't nothing like your real folk when you get sick. Because folk get tired of you after a while. Just be sick for about three or four weeks and you will see who's in your corner. Lay up somewhere for six months or a year and see who's there to change your diaper. Those are fair weather friends. Now I'm speaking from experience because I know what I'm talking about. We do need one another. Tender hearted, forgiving one another. See, when you're feeling good and strong, you say a whole lot of stuff. Just let something happen to you. Even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. Huh? That woman who was married to you and you treated her bad, or vice versa, that might be the very person that has to help you. You mistreated them and they came to your rescue. Got to be careful how you walk because you ain't dead yet. 
And some things God will allow to happen just to get you where you need to be. They say, oh, I'll fix that. Uh -huh. You know why? Because he's concerned about eternity. Whew. Ephesians 5. Does he only have 15 more minutes of torture? Huh? Yeah, this is great stuff. You know what? Because it'll make you victorious. I'm, I'm telling you, it really will. It'll really, it'll really work for you if you will implement it. It'll really work for you. Well, yeah, the transgress is hard. Them folk ain't having no fun. Look how Paris Hilton is screaming over 45 days. I mean, she's going all the way to Arnold now. They're going all the way to the governor. Just go to jail. You get uh, some toothpaste. They're going to give you some. May not be able to get your nails done. You'll be all right. Because if I get drunk and they pull me over, I got to go. What makes you better than me? Just because your name is Hilton? What that got to do with it? Stop drinking. Stop violating. And I'm all in the judge's corner. He was being fair. You can't just say in your face because of who you are. Be a good lesson. Let some of them sisters in there get a hold of it. Out there in Linwood. Long ways from Hollywood. Linwood's a long ways from Hollywood. Huh? You got plenty of time to read one of them old magazines from Kiver to Kiver. Mm -hmm. Verse number one, be ye followers of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ hath loved us and hath given himself for us as an offering sacrifice to God as a sweet smelling savior. But fornication, look at every book I'm reading, ain't it redundant? Why do you think he mentions this over and over and over and over? Because we got to deal with it every day on the big screen, on the internet, on television. Huh? We're prone to go the wrong way. But what the adversary never shows the drunk when he says it's two o'clock, one for the road. He don't see the twisted metal around that lamppost down the street. He don't show you that. He don't show you your life being sucked out of you. He don't show you that part. He shows you what looks like it's fun, but he don't show you that other part. But fornication, uncleanliness, covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become as saints. Neither filthiness, foolish talking, nor just that's those dirty low-down jokes, which are not convenient, but rather giving a thanks. For this ye know, no fornicator, whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Let no man deceive you, with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be ye therefore, but be not ye therefore partakers with them. For you were sometime darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Is that what he says? All right, getting close. First Peter, second Peter, excuse me, chapter one. Hallelujah. Look at all this admonition. I've gone to so many different books that told you the same thing. So God is trying to say something to us. Am I right? Because I know you're under the gun, but you'll win. But you got to walk in the spirit. You're saints. I'm talking to y'all because I love you. God loves you. It's our job to tell you what God is calling for. He calls for it in me. He calls for it in you. Nobody's above the law. Else your mind is gone. I just let someone read, Sister Brown brought it to me, mega church down south where the pastor lost his mind. He got so big in his own eyesight 
that he lured in one of the young girls to have a relationship with her for 14 years and had her believing God had, had elevated her. He was sleeping with that girl for 14 years and had her thinking, but he took advantage of someone who had been battered, had a very poor life, and misused that young lady. I got the script. Terrible. That's spiritual incest. It's debauchery. Licentiousness. Lasciviousness. And preaching. Don't let nobody fool you. If I ain't around, if I drop dead tonight, don't let nobody fool you with no foolishness. You stick to this word. Nothing supersedes this. And God's going to have him a witness whether folk believe it or not. He's got somebody who's living something. 1 Peter chapter number, 2 Peter, excuse me, 2 Peter chapter number 1. Now here is good news here. Verse number 3. According as his divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue, which is strength. He called us to that. Ain't that wonderful? Ain't that, ain't that wonderful? Okay. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Let me give you an assignment. You ought to make up in your mind to spend maybe a month or two I say a month or two because you can't do it all in one night. And just look at all the promises in the Bible that God gives to his people. And then say, he's talking about me. It'll do something for you. All that God promises you and I, oh, my, my, my. If your ways please me, I'll make your enemies at peace. If you seek me first, I'll add all this to you. I mean, he constantly is letting you know, I'll be right there with you. When you call, I'll answer. My ears are open to the righteous night and day. When you're in trouble, I'll be with you and I'll bring you out. With long life will I satisfy you, show you my salvation. Hallelujah. All the promises that God gives to his people, he's talking about us. For the Lord is our shepherd, my shepherd. We shall not want. That, those are just not flowery words. Those are realities. God really is a personal savior that works in the community of men. He works with us. He opens up doors. Yes, he does. I'm here to tell you, he will even move against the unregenerate and make them do for you that you couldn't make them do. He'll set folk up. And they'll wonder why they did it. Because God's got his hand in it. They said, you can't do it. Oh, no, God's going to help me here. He will make a way for me. Hallelujah. When you want to do what's right in God's eyesight, he'll open it up. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. My Lord, come on here, Second Peter. I'm going to give you a case in point. Maybe we don't appreciate it. When we were on prairie, Amen. Risking our life coming out the parking lot every week. Amen. In that hot little church, men standing around the corner. Some of y'all may not have picked this up. I was praying. I would drive the streets night after night from Hollywood to Long Beach. I'd be by myself driving. Lord, I need a building. I've been in stores. I've been everywhere looking for a building. But I asked God, I said, Lord, I don't want to be building a church. I said, would you give me a church? already built close to the freeway. I had no idea that God would do it just like that, even though I was praying that. And look where we are. This church was less than three years old when we bought it. They were built when I was praying. God said, I can't show it to you yet because it ain't finished. When it's finished, and when they finished it, we moved in. Without even shopping for a loan. Didn't even, on my signature and the down payment, we walked in here and got all these pews and most of these chairs for $550. One pew will cost you that. When God is in a thing, 
because God, I know where I want you to be because I got souls I want to save. And he had a place for y'all to come when it was time to get saved. And we ought to thank God. Lord, thank you for thinking about me. Because there had to be a place where God could save people. And we cleaned out the bingo, we repainted it, put a baptismal pool in, and a whole bunch of y'all been baptized in Jesus' name in that pool where there was no water even in the building. And since then, God been filling folk with the Holy Ghost week in, week out, week in, week out. We ought to honor him every time we think about it, because God has smiled on us. Yes, he has, and he's still smiling on us, and he just keeps on blessing us. I'm almost finished. Thank you, Jesus. I praise his name because he opened up doors. He took an ungenerated woman, made that woman work like a workhorse to make sure we got in this building got rid of those less pendants and everything, God opened up a door, then touched that man's heart. When y'all brothers go down there to play basketball, you ought to say, thank you, Jesus, for my own gym. Because if you ought to saw that place before it was a gym, it was a place where they made fasteners for airplane wings. It was dirty. It was filthy. It was full of oil. Amen. And the man turned around and allowed me to sign a paper for $200,000. So he would have a tax write-off, gave him another 200000 We walked in the building, paid cash for redoing the whole place. Somebody ought to say, Lord, you just keep on touching folks' hearts for us. God been kind to us because he was in a 50% tax bracket. He used it as a tax write-off, and now we have classrooms, nursery, amen, gymnasium, amen, offices, and, don't have, and no sorrow with it. We ain't had no building fund program. Ask somebody, have you ever had a building fund? program, they'll tell you no. How many offerings do you take on Sunday morning? One. How many take Sunday? One. Ain't nobody fixing barbecue. Ain't nobody making coconut cakes. We ain't having no rummage sale. We ought to thank God. He just keeps on blessing us because our business is saving business. We're here to win souls. And whether you know it or not, we came in here, the note was $24,000 a month, and we were never late. Every 30 days. And God just kept on blessing the ministry. Thank you, Jesus. Light bill, three and $4,000 a month. Then benevolent fund, toilet paper, and ain't nobody been overtaxed. Amen. Hallelujah. We ought to thank God for how he's blessed us. On top of that, some of y'all got promotions and jobs you never had until God saved you. God turned around and blessed you on your job. He gave you favor because you're one of his children. You were making twenty and $30,000 a year. Now you're making six figures. You ought to say, Lord, it's been a blessing walking with you. You keep on opening up doors for me. He deserves our allegiance. He deserves our praise. He saved our children. Surely we ought to be examples to him. Second Peter, I'm about to finish here. I'm trying to. Lord, help us. I just got to quit. My, 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 my. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Mm, 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 mm. Amen. Amen. Somebody been here a while. Tell him he ain't lying. He telling the truth. He telling he all. He telling the truth. Amen. The devil didn't want it to stay like this, and a whole lot of stuff done come against me. Amen. I'm as strong now as I was when I first started preaching. I'm preaching as hard now as I did when I started 26 years ago. I ain't backed up one inch since I've been over here. I'll be a pit bull until I get up out of here, cause holiness is right. Hallelujah. I still preach the name. I ain't backed up off the baptism. I still tell you how to get the Holy Ghost, and I'll rain your chimes when you sin, and I'll put a Band-Aid on you to heal you up, but I'm going to wear you out until you repent. Because I love you. I'll spank you real good, then I'll hug you, but I'm going to spank you first. Then I'm going to pray for you, that God have mercy on you.
Second Peter. Glory to God. Verse 5, and beside this, give all diligence. Add to your faith virtue, strength. To virtue, get knowledge. That comes from the Bible. That's the book. To knowledge, temperance. Don't get the big head. To temperance, patience. Patience, godliness. Godliness, brotherly kindness. Brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I rest my case for the night. God bless you. Keep on being good saints. Live for God. Holiness is right. Be strong in the Lord. Power of his might. Hallelujah. Amen. We got a race to finish. Got a battle to win. Got a kingdom that we shall inherit. And if we overcome, we shall inherit all things. Anybody tonight that would like to be saved, water baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, it's always available.